Hello. Welcome back. I um, got cut off at about 15 minutes and 33 seconds, according to what it said at the end of that video. I haven't played back the second video yet, so I don't know exactly what word it cut me off on. Um, got my Vote Occupy balloon here, which um, I'm going to be heading down after I finish recording this video to put up on the fence by City Hall, the fence that's around City Hall. Uh, around what the people have um, renamed as Solidarity Park. And uh, I hope other people will follow suit and decorate the fence because it's ugly. Just don't even want to see that. <laughs> so, make the world a better place. Start by beautifying it a little. Let's put some balloons up around the fence. Don't forget to put a message on them because this is not about vandalism we're not going to be painting things that people have to like you know get um cleaning supplies and scrape the paint off and damage the surface underneath you know this is this is a non-violent movement and we're trying really hard to keep it that way in spite of the fact that the police have been ordered to do some pretty nasty things to the people who are in this non-violent movement and as I understand, there is even some talk about removing the nonviolent statement that's read every day at the GA. I wonder if that might have something to do with it. I will say this much. Um, I understand that having a statement that tells them in advance exactly how we're going to behave is not to our advantage. So, as much as I am against violence, I am for removing the statement. And... Or at least, you know, rewording it in such a way that it is not a detriment to the movement. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of a shame when you have to tell someone who's constantly attacking you, we're defenseless. So. Free speech. In this case, 99 cent speech. I, um would encourage people to spend a dollar or two a month and get some balloons and do a little decorating with speech, of course. So they're actually saying something. And hopefully you can find some good things to say. I like the Vote Occupy one. I would be honored if I see a few more of those up that I didn't put there. So please do that. Please at least consider doing it. Okay, so where was I? On my keynotes. Um, okay, I was talking about the Demo Republican Party, or what is better known as the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And I was trying to make a point um, when this thing cut me off that they're basically one and the same. That yes, there are a few things that they differ on polarity-wise. It's kind of like your your mirror image does not look exactly like you. It looks sort of like you in reverse. With maybe a few specks of dust in the way and things like that. Um, you know, depending on how clean your mirror is. And possibly some little bit of distortion, depending on how mm, flat your mirror is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the Democratic and Republican Party are kind of like that. To look at the Democratic Party and say, this is what's going to save us from the Republican Party is as crazy as looking at the Republican Party and saying this is what's going to save us from the Democratic Party. Neither one is going to save, save anyone from the other because they're the same thing. Either way, we vote Democrat, we get Republican. We vote Republican, we get Republican. Notice I don't say either way we get Democrat because the Democratic Party, or as some people like to call it, the Democrat Party, um, <laughs> uh, is actually the left wing of the Republican Party. And when I say that, I mean it in a ling linguistic sense because the left wing of a party, as I was talking about in the other video before it cut me off, the left wing of a party, um, by definition, is the outskirts of the party. It's basically anything out on the fringes. And um, both the Democratic and Republican Party, I'm sure most people have noticed, represent very much the same things. But they do have those few things that they differ in, where the Democratic Party is more out on the fringes of what, what the Republican Party has stated they believe in, and the Republican Party tends to stay more toward the core of what they have stated that they believe in. The um, 
the flip things, the, the things that are, that, are, that are directly opposed to each other, like for example, um, uh, pro-choice and pro-life, are things that I don't believe either party is ever going to resolve. They, they can't because the money that buys their politicians won't allow it. Because too many of these people have already realized that if they start resolving these things, they won't have any way of passing them off as two parties anymore. People are just going. People are just going to go. Okay, well now they've gotten nothing different from each other. So why don't they just join and become one big party and compete with what? That's what they're doing now. They've already done it. They are one big party competing with everything else out there by scaring people into vote for one wing to keep out the other. Now, if you had a big bird coming flying at your window, would it matter which wing hits the window first? Either way, your window's getting hit by a bird. Not a real lot of difference there. So, so time to do something about this big bird. Which is where I get to encourage action, which will get disapproval votes counted in some way. Right now, when we disapprove of the Democratic Party, we have two choices. We can not vote at all, or we can vote Republican. And if we disapprove of the Republican Party, we have two choices. We can not vote at all, or we can vote Democrat. If we disapprove of both the Democratic and the Republican Party, we have two choices. We can not vote at all, or we can make a vote that really doesn't make any sense. Now, when I say that, don't get me wrong. The people who would like to support some candidate who's not Democratic, not Republican, who's, who's not a member of either of those parties, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying the odds have been strongly stacked against those people winning. So people don't generally tend to feel like that's an option. So what I'm asking people to do right now is try to find those candidates. Look for those candidates that you think would be great to have win and ignore what their odds are. Vote for them anyway. Stop voting based on the odds of someone winning and vote based on what you really feel should win. That's called doing what's right. Despite the consequences. That's kind of like why I'm going to be putting this up on the fence out there. And yet there's a possibility that I might get treated badly because of it. You know what? Won't be the first time in my life. I have been threatened not to have a voice in this country anymore. And here I am, having a voice. I'm an actor. I took a career as an actor because I thought I'd be good at it, but also because I felt it would discredit me somewhat. And I know some actors find that sort of um, insulting. But the fact of the matter is there are only, you know, a few categories of people by profession that generally tend to have very little credibility. Actors are one of them, comedians another, which I've been doing that part-time also, stand-up comedian, and uh, of course politician. I didn't want to go there. So here I am now, um, in spite of it, trying to continue my career, which um, as it turns out I was right. Uh, I do a good job of acting. But um, I'm also back to continuing as an activist. So I'm asking people, please, try to find candidates that you can support, that you honestly can stand behind. And if you can find them, vote for them. But don't ignore the fact that there are other positions on the ballot. Don't just find a presidential candidate to vote for and vote for that person and ignore the rest of the positions. As a matter of fact, if you can't find a presidential candidate that you can really stand behind, please write in the word Occupy on the primaries and the general elections in both cases, write in the word Occupy just to show that you were there, that you're occupying the voting booth, that you're occupying the vote, you're occupying the election and that you want to be counted as having been there and occupied the election even though you couldn't vote the way you really wanted. You could not 
find someone to actually put in. But if you find someone you want to put in for the presidency, by all means, vote for them, even if you got to write them in. But what about other positions? I'm not sure what's going to be on the ballot right now. You know, if we got an opening for governor, well, um, you know, again, if you got someone to support, put them on there. Even if you got to write them in. If not, write and occupy. Senate, same thing. You got someone you want to support? Vote for the person. If not, please, write and occupy. I'm not saying this is the greatest way to be represented. It's it's a way of getting our votes counted to say that we disapproved of something in the interim until we can get an electoral reform that counts disapproval properly. And if we get enough write-in votes for Occupy, I don't think it would be too unreasonable to insist that they get counted even though they can't actually win the election in the sense of putting a candidate in. We're not going to have some candidate in that represents the whole Occupy movement. We're not going to have the whole Occupy movement filling one office. It's too many people and they just wouldn't stand for it. They meaning probably pretty much everyone. It would be chaos. So write in the word Occupy, please, on every position that you don't have someone to vote for. Now, what else is in my keynotes? Recognize that many people are not happy with the status quo. I think the Occupy movement speaks for that pretty loudly. Recognize that the unhappiness stems from real problems and not wealth envy. Now, I have heard that talked about. Apparently, people got it from some radio talk show where somebody was talking about people being ashamed that they're poor because they haven't built an empire and become wealthy millionaires or billionaires or whatever the case might be. And there may be a few people out there in that position, but I don't think those are the people who are going out there and risking getting beaten, arrested, whatever the case might be, to try to make a statement that they think that something is wrong with the country. Those may be a few people who are doing some random acts of vandalism and then hiding and trying not to get caught at the fact that they did it because they just don't like the fact that somebody had more than they had, so they destroy something. And that's a shame. But those that are picketing in the streets, those that are marching together shouting, we are the 99%, they're not doing it because they're ashamed. These people are standing proud. And I'm proud of them. And I'm proud to be one of them. So, keep it up, people. Do what you feel needs to be done. And if anybody tries to tell you that you should... Go home, ask them, why don't they just join you? I know, it's been done a lot, and they don't get it. But keep it up. Maybe they'll start to figure it out. So, uh, where, is, where am I? Recognize that people have solutions, which corporate bot politicians won't support. We have a lot of solutions within the Occupy movement. A lot of people are not seeing that because they haven't really taken the time to see it. They want to know what one thing is it that we're representing? What is the one thing? Well, okay, let's give them one. Can we? Vote Occupy. We've already given them this one. Speech is not a crime. They're not getting it. So, when it comes election time, please, vote Occupy. Show the people that we do have something to say. Now, in, in my next video, I'll try to get more into what we have to say, get to some of my keynotes. Again, um, these are completely unscripted videos, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna be saying each time. The keynotes are mainly just so I don't get stuck and go like, okay, what should I say next? Um, except, you know, it might happen anyway. <laughs> And I can always at least refer to the keynotes then to do something about it. Um, so, vote Occupy. 
for any position that you don't have someone you truly want to support. I think this thing's going to run out any second now, and I'm probably going to get cut off in the middle of a word if I don't hit the stop button. So, um, until the next video, I'm heading to the General Assembly for now. Take care.